Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is really going to inspire us in lots of different ways, make us smarter, more intelligent, more even, I would say, emotionally intelligent. I'm excited. But before we talk to our guests, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm a little intimidated. I have to be honest with you. When, uh, when there's a business performance expert as seen on NBC, CBS, Fox, and ABC, and Forbes and all this stuff, I'm, I'm a little intimidated. But well, I'm good. Now she's, in, now she's in the right spot, isn't she? She is. She is. Fine. Yeah. Congratulations to Galit Ventura Rosen, our guest, for finally being on a prestigious podcast. <laughs> Thanks. And, Thanks, Mark. So, Galit, welcome to the podcast. Tell us um, a little bit about being a b- business performance expert, what that means, and how you even started in this. Well, I'm going to start with my base. I started my own company when I was 21 and in the commercial real estate field. And I've owned and operated my own commercial real estate company now for over 25 years in Las Vegas. And I call that my first baby because I, that was born before my first child. So it's always my first baby. And what I recognized was I entered into a field that was at the time in Las Vegas, the average age was around 40 and mostly male. And I was kind of an orphan and I had to really find my own path. And what I found was there were a lot of men and women out there that were really looking at how do I get involved in this field. And so somehow or another, most of my career, I have mentored and worked with other people that wanted to get into commercial real estate. So a few years ago, about four or five years ago, I realized that there was really a need for someone that could show others how to be entrepreneurs, how to have their own businesses. Because a lot of times what happens is we are excited about something that we want to make, invent, do, build, but we don't really know how. And being that I had done it for so long myself, I just kept reinventing business and I have other businesses as well. I found that there was a need for that. So that's really how it started. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd. I mean, I think that's cool. You know, like you, I think that's one of the things that a lot of people miss too, is they, they go through life. They always wonder like, man, what should I do? Well, what you should do is probably look at the stuff that's missing in your life and then like do that. Right. Like if, if something's missing for you, maybe it's missing for somebody else. And all of a sudden you have this connection. Always. Always. So, so, but you, you specialize, is it true more with um, helping women? get into business or commercial real estate? Yes. Well, I work with men and women in the commercial real estate end, and it's mostly men, but I do have a lot of women. I tend to attract women that want to learn from me just because of my area of expertise. So it tends to be that I have a lot of women that are hiring me for the private coaching. It's absolutely probably like a 90 10 right now with women and also i do a lot of professional speaking i tend to get hired to speak a lot in front of women's leadership networking events than i do men and women so there's absolutely something there yeah so you know it's interesting like scott and i will like we'll run these boot camps and we'll see that in our rooms of land investing Mm -hmm. we're probably 80 percent male and 20% female. And so what would you say is the biggest difference as far as the, the mind of the entrepreneurial mind or the investing mind of a man versus a woman and, 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 and sort of, you know, helping us bridge that gap and getting, uh, you know, speaking more of their language so that um, we're not just attracting so many men? I don't know that it's the language that it's attracting them, to be honest with you, because this is my cup of tea. I work with investors all day long and sell multi-million dollar properties. And most of my investors, if not 98% are men. I think that it really is 
that a female of a lot of times hasn't had that base or that mentorship to show her how to be an investor. So an investor is a little bit different than if I'm coaching people to be commercial real estate agents, which you're also seeing a lot more men in that field as well. So my goal is to bring in more women because I think that it's such a great opportunity. Um, the language itself, to be honest, it's really interesting. I wrote this book called The Successful Woman's Mindset. And a lot of men have bought it because they said, Galit, the things that you share in this book are related to most genders. I said, absolutely. But I put more emotion in it than just logic. And so women, I'm going to talk from my perspective, I'm never going to do an across the board for women because we have crossover in both genders. I myself am an emotional being. But I have learned that when it comes to business, to separate the emotion from the business. So that really is the key, is showing women and also how to attract them to things like land investments to look at the logical pieces. So for example, Mark, I can sell a piece of property that is $50 million to someone just from two or three pages where the numbers are written, you know, in land investment. It's not about the emotional attachment to that property. It's about at the end of the day, what makes sense. Right, right. Scott, how are your thoughts? You know, I think, Matt, Okay, so I want to talk about like the, um, the women investing for a second. I think it's pretty interesting to, to know that or to think about the maybe the, the lack of direction or lack of role model there to support them in that in that effort. And, you know, ultimately, I, I think that I guess when you do look at that a lot of times, you know, the, the stronger independent women that are there, may, maybe they're married, maybe they're not married, you, you know, like they're, they're going to go out and they're going to find these opportunities, right? Um, almost like what you said when you were 21 years old. A lot of times women, I think, and I think like, I'm not an expert at this, but I would believe that a lot of times, especially as women start to look at their families and, you know, building their, you know, their, their families and their husbands and the, the careers and all this other stuff, they sometimes put these investment opportunities on the back burner. And then, you know, it's interesting because my, my children are now, you know, approaching adulthood, if you will. I have one that's 19 and one that's 17. And all of a sudden, you know, you wake up and you realize, or I know from my wife's perspective too, is you wake up and you're like, well, I don't, they don't need me as much as they used to need me, right? Like Mark, I know that your, your family is like in the same spot. They may not need the, the parents the same way. Is, is that a good time for people to kind of transition? And if so, how, how do people or organizations like, you know, what, what Mark runs, how they reach out to people in that, that stage and say, Hey, there's a different way. Invest in yourself now. I, I think from my perspective, I would say that what I've seen be successful is certain types of events focused on women. So I'm just going to give you an example, Mark, sorry, business performance expert hat, <laughs> putting together an event for land investment specifically to women bringing in some women real estate experts as well to sit side by side. I don't know if that's what you do, but I love when people do collaborations and then giving them some perspectives from what Scott said. I think that a lot of times as a woman and somebody that has three kids myself, I had my first child when I was 24. So I was building an empire at the same time as having children, but I didn't skip a beat. I mean, until today, my youngest is 16. My kids are 16, 20, and 23. And I don't skip a beat because I learned how to build my businesses around my children. Now, not everybody can do that. But one of the reasons I decided not to be an employee early on is, first of all, I don't think I could have ever worked for someone telling me what to do, but I also wanted to be able to be there for every important event. But it's interesting, Scott, I spoke at an event in Montreal last spring at a women's leadership event, 35, 40 women. It was a three hour workshop and it was part of a program of six, eight months. And I started telling these women, I run my own businesses. I'm a full-time mom. I'm in a healthy relationship. I love to cook, et cetera. And one of them said to me, well, something's got to give. And it's so interesting because sometimes I think there's a perspective in society that you can't do it all. You can't have it all. Something's got to give. I mean, I, I, think, I think we see that a lot where, you know, people have a, a very passionate view on balance and you know, they're, they're like, okay, well, 
if I'm going to be great with my family, work's going to suffer. If I'm going to be great at work, family's going to suffer. Is sort of the stereotype. Yet, there are ways to create intentionally this model where you can solve your time problem and you can solve your money problem because when those two pieces are solved, then you can really intentionally focus on the places that you matter the most to you. And, um, but it's not easy to do, is it, Khalid? Oh, no. There's no easy involved. There's time, dedication, focus. Focus is like the key. I have days where I only focus on commercial real estate. Then the next day, I will only focus on my VIP clients. I'm very about focus. And a lot of my talks, a lot of my workshops are based on goal achieving success, dis limiting distractions, and so on. We are very easily distracted in society. Now, technology is my best friend because I can sit on the beach and work now in Hawaii. But my technology can also be your enemy because it's a constant distraction. So there's a place where you really need to step back and look at your life and understand one of the, if I may share, Mark, one of the activities I have my clients do. Is that okay? Absolutely. Great. I have them sit down on a Sunday and I have them write out the days of the week. Now, if you work Monday through Friday, we'll just use that. Then I have them in 30 minute increments, keep track for a full week where they spend their time in their work day, okay? If you're done working at five, typically done working at eight, whatever it might be. If you're an entrepreneur, it'll be in pieces because you know we're working all the time in some shape or form. And I have them at the end of the week, look back at the percentages that they're spending in certain areas of their life and related to their business. Then, I have them write down three goals. What are three goals you want to accomplish? And I ask them, does this time directly get you a step closer to accomplishing your goal? If it doesn't, now it could be personal goals too, personal, business, health, financial. But if it doesn't, you really want to ask yourself, why are you doing this? Why are you saying yes? And one of my biggest successes in my career that have, has really helped me is learning how to say no. Yeah, that's that. That is a uh, a big one for sure. Scott, Todd, what are your thoughts? I mean, Mark, how many? P I mean, like, how many people just say yes to everything, right? Like they, I mean, there was a movie. <laughs> there was a movie a few years ago, probably more than a few years ago now, uh, called The Yes Man with Jim Carrey, right? I and like, it. he was he was always saying no to things. No, you don't go to this party. No, no, no. And then. You know, his life was not where he wanted to be. And he met a buddy who, who like went to a seminar and the seminar was on saying yes, yes to everything. And so like when he said no, they like, you know, hit him with the microphone, like, no, you know, this is the wrong answer. So he started saying yes, and his life got better. However, you know, I, I think that if you're in a, I think if you're in a spot where you're saying no to everything, maybe you should say yes. But that said, you know, if you're saying yes to everything, you, you put a lot of your own goals and dreams and desires on the back burner yeah. and mark yeah, like i can think of a couple people like in our community that they that they would say yes to things because it gets them out of doing some of the hard work that they don't want to do and it's not that they're lazy it's that sometimes the work that you need to do that's challenging and will move the needle in your life it's scary to do work that will move the needle in your life sometimes because you don't know what that's going to be. And then you just say, Oh yeah, I'll just go do this. And so you say yes, to these other things that take away from your own time. And then you never move, do the stuff that's going to move the needle in your own life. Yeah, that kind of leads me to my next question for Galit, which would be, what do you think you see more of? Because I, I know for myself, like I'm afraid of everything. Like I have a, an anxiety disorder. Um, but what do you think when you see with your clients, do they have more of a fear of failure, however that's defined, or do they have more of a fear of success? I don't think there's one more than the other. It depends on the person. I actually have general anxiety disorder as well, Mark. So it's really interesting because people think I make it look so effortless and easy when I'm on interviews or when I'm on stage, which I'm, it's not, it's just, I recognize like you do, because I'm sure you do it as well, that that's just what we're supposed to do. And that's our purpose and passion. So we find a way. And the reason I like to share it, 
might be why you like to is because sometimes we make things look so easy. People think, well, it's easy for them. No, it's not. It takes just as much as work, hard dedication and focus as it does the next person. We've just made a choice, which is my favorite word in the world, a choice to do things that are not easy. So going back to what Scott said and what you asked, fear is, in my opinion, the number one dream killer, the number one thing that sucks life out of people. I have never seen anything in my life like what fear does to people, through people I've worked with, through people I've met, through people in my life that I love. And so fear of success versus fear of failure. I think that there is a definite balance. Now it's not facts, so don't look it up. I think that people that are used to a comfort level are scared of fear of success because it's something different that isn't comfortable. I think people that are successful stop themselves from going to the next level many times and stay in their comfort zone where you and I might look at them and go, oh my God, they're so successful, but they could be more successful or want to be is because they're now scared to fail because they've hit a certain ground of success. No, yeah, Scott, go ahead. No, I'm just thinking like that. I mean, that's right, right. You know, like you get to some point. And there's too much to lose, right? Like it's, oh my gosh, if I lose, uh, you know, I'm going to lose my house or could lose my house. And Mark, we talk about this at Elite Weekend, right? Like at our Elite right. Weekend, we talk about this and we talk about ways to come through this because it's a, it's a real problem that we see. And, you know, I, I'm just, I'd be curious what, what you think the answer is. Me? It's, it's, yeah, Mark? sorry. I don't know yeah, if sorry to hear you. Sorry, you. Okay. <laughs> Galit. <laughs> yeah. Galit. So I honestly believe that the answer, or not the answer, but one of the activities that you can do, because everyone's different. I don't do cookie cutter. I went back to school and got my master's degree at 38 in therapy because I wanted to understand so much how the brain works, how behaviors work, how you can change them. And I love that I did that because it's given me so much insight and it takes energy. It takes time. It takes focus to change a pattern. But I believe in fear. The number one step is you've got to be aware that you have a fear. Then you've got to start asking the hard questions. Why do I fear this? And a lot of times you do not want to know the answers because now you have to look at the fact that there's some things you have to change. And then the next thing I would suggest is write down the reasons why you fear whatever that might be. So I'll make something up. Huge fear, public speaking, right, Mark? Huge. Sure, absolutely. Three, you go, so you ask yourself, why do I fear speaking? And since I know so much about this area, I'll share with you. Fear of judgment right? Fear that you're going to look nervous, fear that you're going to mess up, top three. So now you ask yourself, well, why do I fear these and what can I do to help myself so I stop having that fear? And it might be a meditation before, visual exercises, whatever. And then you rip off the band-aid and you say, okay, I'm going to speak in front of five people. Then I'll speak in front of 10. Then I, and you take that baby step. People sometimes think to overcome fears, you have to make this big leap Jump, I'm in Vegas, right? Jump off the stratosphere and the bungee jumping. No, you don't need to do that. You can just go up to the 20th level and look out the window, then go up to the 40th if you want to bungee jump and take a look. So you can do it in little steps instead of thinking of it as this huge thing you have to overcome. No, I, I, I really love that. And, you know, when we go into mindset, so often, you know, it's not how to anymore. We all know how yes. to do just about anything. And if we don't know how, there's an abundance of material. It's not like it used to be where, you know, you'd have to have a degree or you'd have to, you know, um, find some incredible mentor and, and get lucky. I mean, it's all there at our fingertips. How to do literally almost anything. But the mindset piece of it, we're still just not there. And it's, it's almost, I mean, I don't know if you agree with this, it's almost not even as valued, right? As a parent, I, could, I, I look at my kids and I say, you know, we really value those straight A's, but we certainly aren't, aren't pushing them to know how to meditate or, and, you know, or have mindfulness, let's say, uh, about these things as, as we do, okay, do you know physics? So, but arguably it's, 
more important. So how do we learn these mindset shifts? I mean, if you're going to say, okay, here's, here's a great mindset shift place to start, where would you start? It's so, it's so fun when an interview goes the way you want it, even though you don't plan it. <laughs> so I am really big about mindset. I speak about it all the time. I have talks on my book, The Successful Woman's Mindset, The Leaders, The Successful Leader's Mind, that's The Successful Entrepreneur's Mindset. I'm really big about mindset and it's undervalued. So, so many of these speaking engagements that I'll apply to will ask for the logical mark, the business, the goal achieving, the, the, whatever. They don't ask for the mindset. And I believe, again, not fact-based, so don't look it up. I believe the mindset is 80% of the win. I believe the how is 20. That's just my personal opinion because I can teach you all day long how to be successful. But if you don't have the mindset to match, it doesn't matter what I teach you. And we've seen that over and over again. So I think where I would start to shift the mindset is I would sit with myself. And this is what people don't like because we're always rushing and busy and we got to accomplish the next goal. And when we accomplish that, we got to focus on the next one. And we're taught in society, we're taught in school to be focused on what we're going to accomplish. But if you sat with yourself just for a few minutes and started with, what do I want? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but people don't know. I know I want to be successful. Well, what does that mean to you? What do you want? I want freedom, financial freedom. I want to be in a successful relationship. I want to own my own business and then go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then what happens is people get scared and they freeze. Well, I don't know how. And they use that as an excuse. It's not the how, like you said. Then they need to ask themselves, do I believe I can? It's that simple. And a lot of times the answer they're going to get to themselves is going to be no. So I say start with believing you can and believing in yourself. The reason people are successful, in my opinion, in this life, in this world, is because they know without a doubt. And I mean, don't get me wrong. There's always a little doubt almost without a doubt, that they absolutely can. And you've got to believe that you can to achieve what you want to achieve. Todd. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, I, you got, I agree. Like, how else you say it? I agree. I, I mean, you've got to, you got to believe you can do it. And then you can't, if you, you know, if you can't, if you don't believe it, then you're never going to accomplish yeah. it. Not, well, you're a good example, Scott, because you say this all the time. When he started land investing, he had 100% confidence that he would be successful only because he would listen to me on the podcast. He's like, if this bozo can do it, there's no way I can't do it. Well, and he was 100% right. Well, wait a minute. To be, to be fair, it wasn't you that I thought was the bozo. It was some other guy, and like he's a smart guy. I'm not. I, I, I like the guy. I'm not right. claiming he's a bozo, but the 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 way that he would explain things, I'm like, dude, I know for a fact if that guy can do this and be successful, I can do it and be successful. And then I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people miss is because that self doubt, man. We all have self doubt, and. I think that the people that are successful, the people that you look at and think, oh, well, they're, they're, I want to be like them. Everybody has self-doubt. We all do. It's that, I mean, there's not a soul out there that doesn't have self-doubt. The thing that makes it work, though, is they just keep believing, they keep doing, then they start achieving, and then success brings on other success. It's not, it's not that they're special or, or you know, have special powers. They just keep going. Yeah, but yeah, what I like about Galit, though, is I think some people really don't have that mentality or right. they don't really, really in the depths of their soul believe it the way that you believed it. And you need that extra person there to right. walk you through it because left to our own devices, I don't think we can do it. I, even, even with a book, I think you need somebody – who's kind of just there is trained, can ask the right questions, can, you know, and that's why I love the, the, this business performance expert coach because she can really walk you through it, ask the right questions and help you in a way that you probably couldn't help yourself. Galit, is that, am I, am I, you know, I true, have, does that resonate? 
Absolutely. I've had some type of mentor coach my whole life. I believe in it myself. It's so interesting because what I have done when I decided to go into what I consider this online world, I was brick and mortar, commercial real estate, Las Vegas. I only focus on Vegas. And all of a sudden I was like, I'm supposed to do more. I know I'm supposed to share. I got coaches and I switched coaches three times because I hit their level and then I was ready to go to the next level. And then I got that next one. So the first coach was um, five figures. The second coach was six figures, you know, the third coaches and that's what they're making. So if I think for me, I believe so much in education and so much in knowledge and learning. And one of the things you said, Mark, that I loved was the how is there. It's at our fingertips. I got my master's degree with an online program from an accredited university because I was a full-time mom and a full-time business owner, but it was like amazing. And so everything's right there. So somebody that you find that will support you, that will believe in you till you can believe in yourself, teach you the tools, the methods. For me, it's priceless. I believe in it for myself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Same, same with me. Same with Scott. We, you know, we have mentors. I mean, Scott's my mentor. I can just call him up and, you know, because I, I know myself and he like, I'll let my own anxiety get in the way. He's like, no, I'll just do it. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And then just knowing that I have to meet with him the next, you know, day, that accountability, like, I don't, I don't want to deal with the emotional shame of, of letting him down. I'll just do it for Scott. Even when I don't feel like doing it. Yeah, the account. So I, I, I always yeah. compare it, Mark, to a personal trainer. Yeah, a personal I, yeah. trainer is a perfect example. You'll go and you'll invest all this money and you're going to show up at seven in the morning because first of all, you're paying. Second of all, they're going to make you feel bad when you don't. You want to show up to your appointments, right? So I always compare it to a personal trainer. You're willing to pay a personal trainer. Why wouldn't you be willing to pay a mindset expert or a business expert or a health expert? It doesn't matter. It's whatever it is that you want to improve in your life. And I also believe a lot of us have a lot of the tools inside us. We're just not aware and shifting the mindset. There's that word again, just a tad will make the world of difference in your life. I've seen women that I've worked with, with a mindset piece of shift, just a tiny shift gets so much of what they want in their life. And they're just, they can't believe it. Oh my gosh, Galip. I got this and I got that and I got the promotion and he finally asked me to marry him. And, and it's like all the pieces of your life, not just one. Because even though I work with business owners or entrepreneurs or executives, the personal and the mindset always shows up because it's all intertwined in some shape or form. No, I love it. I love it. Well, this has been a really fun podcast, but now Galit, it's time to ask you for your tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Oh my gosh. Uh, it's so funny. You warned me and I'm still thinking. So I think my tip of the week would be, and you're going to laugh at this, is google.com. Google.com Google has been my best friend. First of all, it's made me the smartest mom on the planet. But it's also the place where I go and I use keywords to search for what I want to accomplish. So use keywords, search for what you want to do. There are so many courses, books, education out there at your fingertips and people. So I actually want to make it a little broader than more specific that each person that's listening is so different and so unique in their own way. And I really believe that. But don't let your how stop you from getting what you want because it's out there. Yeah, I know. And I think that's a great tip because I have a Mac and it's really easy to use Google where Scott has a PC and I think Bing <laughs> is like baked in. I'm with Scott. Oh, no. I'm with no. Scott. <laughs> Wait, what no. was that? I love PCs and I have a droid phone and I will not cross over. Nothing against Mac. Oh, my daughter has one. Wait, Gary, do, you have, do, you have, do you have a Surface? <laughs> do I have a what? A, sur a Microsoft Surface? What's a Microsoft Surface? No, sure Thank you. So, <laughs> if okay. I don't know it's what okay. it is, apparently I don't need it, right, Scott? You don't. You definitely don't need it. But I think the fact <laughs> that Microsoft's reading? marketing is this poor that you don't even know what it is. <laughs> oh no! A lot. Listen, she's using Windows, Mark. Because oh yes, as our last podcast said, any reputable 
business person would be using Windows. <laughs> All right. Well, I just threw up in my mouth. Anyways, <laughs> Scott, what is your tip of the week? All right. You know, Mark, <laughs> that's funny. Mark, here's the deal. Landing pages. There's so much you can learn from landing pages, right? Uh, here, check out this website, saslandingpages.com. And on this website, uh, they basically show you all kinds of different landing pages. And you can sort by the, the landing page. If you want to look at what different pricing pages might look like or about us pages, you know, you can scroll through the, the top features here. And basically, it's a collection of landing pages to generate some ideas. There you go. This is great for geekpay.io. It is, or lgpass.com. Or, or lgpass.com, which, yeah, there you go. Or, you know, if you go to landgeek.com forward slash lgpass, you can see it. All right, this is fantastic. So my tip of the week is, you know, learn more about Galit. She's got all these resources on the website. I'm going to get the successful woman's mindset. I'm not afraid. My wife might I'll send you a raise copy, an eyebrow. Mark. Message me your email. I'll send you a signed copy. Tell me your wife's name. Rachel. R-A-C-H-E-L. Awesome. Thank you. And um, learn more. Just go to Galit Ventura Rosen. R-O-Z as in zebra. E-N dot com. And really just there's a ton there. I guarantee if you spend just 10 minutes on the site, you will be a better person for it, um, for sure. And um, you can even just subscribe to get her, her free weekly uh, business tools, which is always fun. So, Galit Ventura Rosen, are we good? Yes, thank you. That was fun, guys. Great. Scott Todd, are we good? We're great, Mark. All right. I want to thank the listeners. Just a reminder, the only way, the only way we're going to quality guests like a Galit Ventura Rosen from GalitVenturaRosen.com is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit course, as well as the newest wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Today's podcast was sponsored by Flight School. Learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Scott, you ready to do this? I'm ready. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Galit's like, if I knew they were going to end like this, I don't know if I would have come on. <laughs> we got to practice, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We, we, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to be getting coaching on that. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>